Good evening if you're in Kingston and hello if you are elsewhere and studying remotely. It's so nice to have you in this virtual space for the uh, famous Arts and Science Exchange Connect hosted by the International Programs Office. My name is Haley McCormick. I am the Arts and Science Exchange Coordinator and I use the pronouns she, her, and I'm joined by my colleague Nikki who will ask to introduce herself. Hello everyone. Yes, my name is Nikki Gale. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the International Programs Assistant at the IPL. So Nikki and I are going to be your hosts uh, for tonight's event, Exchange Connect. As I mentioned, this is one of our most famous events and its purpose is to help students who are leaving Queens on exchange from the Faculty of Arts and Science and students who are here on exchange in the Faculty of Arts and Science Connect. Um, usually we're in person and we have pizza, but because of COVID we're pivoting and we're, we're doing the best we can, but we hope you have some really delicious snacks for you tonight. Um, and we've got a really great session ahead of us. Uh, we're here together for about two hours and please know you can reach out to Nikki and I at any point if you've got questions. Nikki, can we go to the next slide please? To begin our time together, I would like to acknowledge that Queen's University and Kingston are both situated on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg and Haudenosaunee nations. To recognize this is to reflect on the longer history of this place, one that predates the arrival of the earliest European settlers. And it's also to reflect on the special relationship that exists between Indigenous nations and the land. I particularly like to emphasize to students who are on exchange and we have students on different types of exchanges here tonight, the importance of understanding the, the land beneath your feet and the history of that land, but also the ongoing current issues on that land. Um, we've just had a national election here in Canada, and this was a, a really important topic, uh, Indigenous settler relations and nation-to-nation and -nation relations. The, uh, the environment was a really important topic as well, and we know that Indigenous nations here on Turtle Island are the caretakers of the land. Um, I would encourage everyone here tonight, including myself and Nikki, to just reflect on what that means, and particularly for us being located here in the Kingston area, uh, on the shores of Lake Ontario, and surrounded by so much natural beauty, what our relationship is to um, uh, the, the various uh, histories and the present conversations, but also uh, in, in actuality, the land itself. Um, and for those students who are headed abroad to different lands, uh, think about the responsibilities that you will take up as a guest on those lands as, as well. And please do incorporate this into your exchange experience. Next slide, please. We are in a Zoom room tonight for, as I mentioned, about two hours, and we want to remind you of a few pieces of etiquette and protocol so that we can ensure that this is um, as safe and as respectful a space as we could possibly make it collectively. So please be mindful that we are indeed in a public space. If you're using the chat, if you're sharing any photos, or if you're sharing anything from your personal life just in conversation, remember that it is a public space. And, and this is um, also this, this presentation itself is recorded. Um, as we're probably all aware, after 18 months of living on Zoom and Microsoft Teams, there could be acts of Zoom bombing, which means that someone who is uninvited comes into the space and causes some issues. We're hopeful that that won't occur, and we thankfully have not had that occur at any IPO virtual events. But if this were to occur, either in the main meeting or in your breakout room, we ask that you contact a member of our team. So that's Nikki or myself, and we will remove the person uh, who is Zoom bombing from the meeting. Of course, then we will follow up to address the incident with everyone here and, of course, reach out to anyone directly involved just to ensure people are feeling okay and as safe as possible. And if at any time you're feeling uncomfortable during Exchange Connect, whether in your conversations or if you find the presentation um, maybe is reminding you of some uncomfortable things, please contact Nikki or I if you're comfortable for some help. We are here to help make this as enjoyable as an experience as possible. You can contact us particularly if you are in your breakout room by leaving the breakout room. So clicking the leave button that will be in the bottom right corner of your screen. That will bring you back to the main room where either Nikki or I will be be during the remainder of the session. So there will always be someone there. Another thought is you could also email IPO at queensu.ca at any time because we get the little notifications. So we'd see that too. And we recommend that you take a screenshot of this slide before we move on, just in case you want to check back in on the etiquette and any of the supports we're providing during this session. Next slide, please, Nikki. 
Okay, I'm gonna wait five seconds in case someone's taking a screenshot. Great, good idea. Here we go. Perfect. So of course, and this message is really geared towards the students who are, are here and are headed out on an exchange in winter 2022. We just want to remind everyone that COVID-19 is still um, very much part of our reality. And um, while we remain hopeful that our exchanges are going to proceed next term, there does remain a possibility that student mobility, including your exchange, could be suspended. So continue to look at the guidance we've provided. Again, this is geared towards our students who are leaving Queens on Exchange. So you have an information sheet and we have the town hall recording from August that you can take a look at, particularly, of course, in regards to your financial planning as you engage in pre-departure prep and contact us if you want to have a conversation about this at all. Next slide, please. Okay, so what is the structure of Exchange Connect? We're gonna start off with about a 40, 45 minute presentation that focuses on the three main stages of exchange. So pre-departure, which is where you are all now, um, for those headed out on exchange. Arrival, um, so your experience in your host community and at your host university, and then returning to Queens, which is sometimes a tricky part of exchange. So Nikki and I have put our heads together. We've thought back on the advice we've got from previous students, and we have a really great presentation here that is kind of from that student perspective, and it's going to talk holistically about what your experience will be. If you are here in the session and you are a student who has traveled to Canada and to Queens on exchange, you are very much welcome to stay for this presentation. You might find some helpful tips and suggestions as we go through, um, but we are directing this part of the, the session really towards the Queens students who are, are headed abroad. So um, hang around if you're interested and if you're not, maybe if you skip dinner or something like that, know you can also take a bit of a break for 40 minutes if you'd like and then join us at uh, probably about quarter to eight o'clock, um, which is when we will start the breakout room conversations, which brings me to the second part of our session. So, oh, sorry, Nikki, can you go back one? Thank you. So uh, the second half of this event is going to be small group sessions. So you'll join a Zoom breakout room and speak with other arts and science students who are headed to your host uni or Queens, uh, sorry, students who are here at Queens on exchange. And I just wanna note, there are some photos in this presentation um, that were taken before the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you're not seeing masks, if you're seeing some close contact, um, this, is, this is likely why. Awesome, thank you, Nikki, next please. Okay, so I'm gonna take us through the first of the three stages we talked about in our presentation before we hit breakout rooms. And this is preparing to depart for exchange. So again, Queen students who are here and headed out on a winter 2022 exchange, this is where you are now. And we wanna start off by asking you, and for any students who are here on exchange at Queens and are sticking around for the presentation, you can think back to the months before you joined us and think about everything you were feeling at that time and participate too, if you'd like. We'd like to ask you a question so you can um, you can indicate what your response is. Nikki, do you mind running the poll here? And we just uh, want to know. Oh, sorry, Haley, one quick second. Um, for some reason, my polling session is not active right now. Are you oh. able to uh, open it up? Let me see. Yes, I am. So all I am right. going to launch a question for you all. This is anonymous, so you can choose as many as you like, but we want to know how are you feeling about your upcoming exchange? What are the emotions that are you're, you're really connecting with now? Amazing. Okay, so seeing lots of excitement, seeing quite a bit of nervousness. That's checking out with me. How about you, Nikki? Sorry, I think I should have done a test run. It's not showing up for me, but oh, okay. I'll listen to what you're saying. Perfect. Okay. Well, I can account for uh, for some of our response here. So I think we've got about 91% of folks have responded. And the top emotion folks are feeling right now is excitement, which is great. We've got 86% folks feeling excited. 69% of folks are feeling a bit nervous. 39% are feeling happy about what exchange will bring. 30% a bit uncertain which makes sense, and 29% uh, are confused. So hopefully this presentation and some other supports we provide will help with that uh, confusion. So thanks so much for everyone who participated. Um, I wanna talk with you in this part of our uh, session about what you're supposed to be doing right now and how you should be preparing for exchange in a way that's gonna help you feel confident about going on the program. Um, also in a way that is going to, oh, 
I think see someone is just drawing on the screen. So I'll ask you to hold off on that just because we are recording the session. But thanks so much for the enthusiasm. So excited to see the hearts and the, the love for pre-departure. So really our goal in this main uh, first section is just to tackle uh, where you are now and how we can help with this. Nikki, next slide, please. So we're going to talk a few, a few things here, but I want to start off with doing a couple of rapid fire bullet points on some common topics that we get questions about. So research um, is something that, of course, everyone started doing when they thought about applying for exchange, and it's something that only continues as you move through the program. Um, you will be all pros at researching if you weren't already by the time you wrap up. At this stage, along with completing your paperwork, we encourage you to research the culture of your host community, um, opportunities that you could be partaking in while you're abroad. So maybe thinking about things like student clubs or like local travel uh, opportunities like parks or, or outdoor places that you might want to visit. But these are ways that you can start to get both excited about your upcoming exchange, but also start to prepare and mentally envision what this is going to entail, what this will look like for you in a few months. So that's super helpful. Your passport and your visa is probably on your mind. So we want to remind you that your passport needs to be up to date and wait until you receive your host university acceptance letter before you start to order any kind of travel documents like a study permit or a visa. You won't be able to do that um, until you receive uh, those that acceptance letter. It's just not possible. Um, but you can start taking a look at your passport now. So I highly recommend it. Quick note on the visa front, I remember applying for my student visa when I went on exchange and I actually thought I was applying for a credit card, like that's what I associated with the word visa, which is not the case. Um, but if anyone is uh, maybe new to traveling, a first generation traveler, if you're feeling like that, um, know that at least myself as the exchange coordinator was once in those shoes, so you're certainly not alone. OCAS, we are going to be talking about the off-campus activity safety policy, as it's known, on October 6th. That's when the safety abroad session will happen for any outgoing exchange students. So incoming students, you don't need to attend. Um, and that is a, a mandatory safety training you will all participate in by October 30th. So if you haven't already, jot that down in your calendar or your diary, because that's coming up soon. Housing. I had a question even today about planning housing for outgoing students. So we encourage you to consider subletting a room if you have a full year lease um, and maybe an incoming exchange student in the winter term could take that over for you through a sublet. But also starting to research your housing abroad and remember that your host university is going to give you instructions and information on housing options available to you. Academic advising is also something we really hope you're thinking about, especially after our uh, academic orientation session. Um, so please speak and plan your courses and remember to do that with your transfer credit advisor. And of course, travel. <laughs> travel is something I hope that you're feeling really excited about booking and starting to plan. Remember that um, you should be booking a refundable fight, uh, flight. So making sure you're looking at cancellation policies and refund policies. And that is like your visa, after you receive your host university acceptance letter. Next slide, please. So let's walk through a few of the tasks that I know that you, many of you are already very well engaged in. So your host university application, we talked about this a little bit at your exchange orientation, but I wanna provide you with um, some more details now. So remember that you will be contacted by our team, the International Programs Office, and potentially also your host university when it's time to apply. That could be any time from now until November. So if it's you know mid-October and you haven't heard from us, that's okay. It might be that you have a later nomination date and that's why you haven't heard yet. Remember that your host universities build their application timelines keeping in mind that you need to purchase flights, you need to organize housing, you need to register for courses, um, and you need to apply for a study permit possibly. So they've factored all of that in when they set those dates. So if you haven't heard from us, don't be alarmed because we will follow up with you if we've contacted you, but we haven't heard from you. Um, on that note though, we also need you to not apply to your host university until you hear from us. That's happened in the past and that can sometimes lead to confusion at the host university. And I've seen that kind of set students off on the wrong path administratively. So we really want you to practice some patience and wait to apply until you hear from us. 
of course, watch your Queen's email for this very important information because it will be reaching you in the next uh, few weeks. And do remember to check your junk or your clutter folders in your inbox because especially with host university, sometimes um, the, the account won't recognize an unknown sender. And, Part of me might accidentally send um, some really important emails in there. So start to make a habit of doing that while you're on the exchange program. If you're really eager and you want to set out a timeline, but you haven't heard from us, what you can do is visit your host university's fact sheet on our Find a University webpage and get more information about when your application will be due, you know, seeing if there's any instructions that you can start to read and prepare for. Sometimes that's included in the fact sheet. And of course, our team is there to help you interpret your application. I've heard from many students who have gotten that prompt to apply and then have, you know, uh, reached out, come to our Zoom rooms, sent me an email, sent Nikki an email, just asking for clarification on things like supporting documents or um, technical issues or, or things like that. So we're always here with our catchers, bits open, ready to help with your questions. And I think we have a poll here, Nikki. So I'll take a look at that next poll. Um, out of curiosity, who has been contacted uh, going out on exchange to apply yet? So let us know. You know, at this time of year, we also hear very often from students who are nervous because their friends have heard and, and they haven't heard yet. Um, and I think this poll should bring you a little bit of assurance that we're just getting into the timeline really because about 60% of students here are still waiting to hear uh, and only 4% have heard and have actually submitted it. So that's what the, the distinction is. So we're very much getting into the thick of uh, nomination period and you're starting to hear uh, pretty soon. So that's great. Thanks everyone for participating. Next slide, please. So we talked about this quite heavily at your outgoing uh, arts and science exchange orientation. So I'm not gonna spend a, a ton of detail on it today, um, but I wanna remind you that you're working with your transfer credit advisor as you plan your host university courses. And remember that your um, exchange is based on credit load, not on course load. So we've got a note here on the slide that says your academic parameters of exchange is going to state exactly what a full course load is at your host university. There's no guesswork on your part. And Nikki and I were just talking about sending those out today. So they're gonna reach you in the next two weeks or so. I see we have a quick poll here. So I'm gonna end our last one and we will send this out. We're kind of curious to know what kind of courses if you're going out on exchange uh, you're, you're planning on taking, are those electives? Are they a mix of core and elective courses? Are they all core? Okay, so it's looking like the majority, about six, 65, 64% of students are taking a mix of elective and core courses. So that's really helpful. And then second in line there is electives for sure at 26% and about 10% of students are needing to take all core courses. Miranda has asked in the chat, who do we find out who our credit, uh, sorry, transfer credit advisor is? Miranda, you're going to use the, um, the transfer credit package that we sent you earlier this week to find out exactly who that person is. Next slide, please, Nikki. So once you have your academics well in hand, another common um, and, and pretty large planning component in pre-departure is sorting out your housing. And that means both sorting out your housing here in Kingston, if you do need to sublet your room, but also uh, organizing your housing at, in your host country. When I went on exchange, I uh, ended up staying in residence in both of my exchanges. And it was a wonderful opportunity because I got to meet some local students, but I also got to meet a lot of exchange students. And I would encourage you to ask um, some questions about what the housing situation is like in your host uh, community when you're in the breakout rooms earlier tonight. Also remember that your host uni is going to give you, you know, really specific details on what the housing situation will be like for you. Um, and then of course, what about your place here? So you can uh, you can think about subletting your house and we would encourage you to contact someone named Adam King at Queen's University, who is the off-campus living advisor. And he can talk with you all about the rental uh, situation here in Kingston, give you some tips on subletting and the like. Next slide, please, Nikki. Finances, this is a really important part of your pre-departure preparations. So we would encourage you to think and look for scholarships and bursaries if you think that uh, that would be uh, possibly helpful or available. We try and let you know about any we're aware of that are associated with your host communities. 
Um, of course, one tip that I heard before I went on exchange was starting to get used to foreign currency before you depart, but I might be aging myself here because I think probably a lot of folks are using cashless options for paying for things while they're abroad. Um, but you can always start to get a handle on that, start looking at the exchange rate and those types of things as part of your financial planning. Um, plan for changes to your daily living expenses as well. Perhaps the cost of living is lower in your host community than it is um, here in Kingston. That might be really great, but if it's a bit higher, you can use websites like Numbeo um, to start to figure out, okay, so what, what is more expensive? Is it more expensive to eat in restaurants? And if that's the case, how am I going to mitigate that in my budget? Um, and then, of course, learn how to manage your budget, especially when you're adding new lines like travel and wanting to go out somewhere with friends that you're meeting. If you run into issues with finances well abroad, make sure that you, you have a backup plan, you have a contingency plan. And that might mean talking with folks in your life who will be still in your home community, like Kingston, if you're from, if you're, if you're local, um, to kind of try and talk about maybe what some contingency plans would be. Who would you contact? Um, those types of things. Um, so I, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat. I'm sorry, I'm not catching everything, but Jacob has just asked, is the slide deck available to be sent out afterwards? And we are gonna send the recording out. We could also send out the slides as a PDF. That's no problem. Um, one thing I did when I went on exchange was let my bank know that I was studying abroad. That just prevented any kind of alert system around fraud or things like that happening and me getting cut off. Unfortunately, I did see that happen to a friend while I was abroad. So good idea to touch base with your bank. Um, and then prepare for unanticipated costs because of COVID. We have spoken with you about this. Try and include that in your budget as you're planning for exchange. And do not make any exchange related purchases that are not refundable or covered by insurance. This is always a good tip, but particularly when there's a little bit um, more instability you know, caused by, by the pandemic. Um, so we've got a poll here. And let me see if I can open this up for us. So we're wondering, would you be interested in attending an exchange budgeting webinar later this term? This might be something we're able to provide and we just wanna gauge interest. Awesome, thanks everyone so much for participating. So about 50% of folks are saying yes, that to me sounds like a yes, eh, Nikki? Um, we can definitely work on something of that nature. Um, and then a, a good portion of you are saying possibly as well. Thanks so much, everybody. Keep an eye out on your uh, on your inbox for, for something to come there. All right, Nikki, can we go to the next slide, please? So uh, <laughs> you might be sick of hearing me talk about paperwork, unfortunately, but I'm going to do it a little bit more. Um, it's really important to have your documentation well organized before you depart for exchange. I assure you that will make your experiences abroad much smoother. So the first thing you can do, you can do this this evening if you'd like, is check your passport's expiry date. We never want you to be in a situation where you're abroad and you have an expired passport. So that's an easy thing to do and then work with the government to get a new passport if that's needed. Check to see if you need a study visa or permit. Again, your host university is gonna give you those details. Ensure that your travel or health insurance covers COVID-19 related illnesses and an emergency evacuation back to your home country for the duration of your travel if that's appropriate for your personal circumstances. You're going to hear more information about things like travel and health insurance and COVID-19 at the October 6th OCASP session. Compile a list of important financial information. So that relates to what I was talking about on that last slide there. Um, make a list of emergency phone numbers. And I don't know about you all, but I have no phone numbers committed to memory. So you may want to um, actually write these down, maybe have them password encrypted on a computer or something like that. But if you have something happen while abroad and you need to reach out to folks, it's a good idea to maybe have a backup. Along with that, make sure you have multiple photocopies of everything. Um, this is again, experience from past exchange students. So maybe the photocopy thing is also aging me a little bit here. <laughs> maybe we're into scams now and we're not so much using paper copies, but making sure that you have securely stored photocopies of really important documents like your passport can be really important. A quick funny story for you all, it wasn't funny at the time though, is I actually lost my passport when I was visiting Ireland when I was on exchange uh, in Scotland and I was both dismayed at the fact and I was also really happy because I thought I'd get an extra week in Ireland. Um, thankfully the guard of the police there found it later in the day it had been in the airport as I was preparing to fly back to Scotland but I knew that my folks at home had a copy of my passport scanned and securely stored and so as I made my way to the Canadian embassy I had a little bit of assurance there 
So do take some lessons from my own uh, troubled past there and uh, make sure to have multiple photocopies. Next slide, please. So here are a few other considerations that I want to really encourage you to think about some, some important reflection questions in terms of safety. Make sure you're registered with your embassy at your in your host country and know where it is as well. I actually sought out my embassy when I did go to um, to Ghana. That was the first place I had traveled to on exchange. Think about your health related concerns at this stage before you depart. Do you have all of the necessary medications or prescriptions? Do you require vaccinations for your destinations? Are you able to travel with medication if you, you need to take it with you? Think about staying in touch. Once you go abroad, there's going to be a lot of things happening really quickly. It's exciting. It can also be challenging at times. Um, so it's great to have kind of a, a plan in place um, to stay in touch. Is it using Zoom or FaceTime perhaps? Um, and also learn from a, a mistake from my, my past of exchange and make sure that you call those people closest to you, whether those are uh, parents or caretakers or a friend or a partner, make sure that you um, you contact them when, when you get abroad, because I did not do that when I got abroad and I caused a lot of worry on behalf of my family and friends. On the note of family, uh, make sure that they know when you're expected to arrive. And then if there are any difficulties, you know there's people who know where you're supposed to be. And think about things like communities abroad. So if you are really engaged here in Kingston or um, in at Queens, if you're part of clubs or groups, or if you volunteer, think about ways that you can um, already start to initiate that. It can be really a fun exercise too. You can start to Google clubs at your host university or in your host city um, and start to think about maybe participating in some of those. I think that's a helpful tip because it helps prepare that transition and gives you a little bit of consistency even as you're making a bit of an adaptation. Next slide, please. So we do have some really great resources, including some identity abroad resources, which are launching in October. So we've built some resources around, um, you know, reflection questions and, and pointing students with different identities to different um, tools and things like that that exists online. So some great podcasts and articles, um, which can be really helpful as you're preparing to study abroad and make those transitions. Check in with any services that you use on campus to discuss your transition to a new university. So if you're registered with the academic success services, start, excuse me, start thinking about, um, you know, what that transition to your host university looks like. Do they have a similar service? Could you touch base with anyone that you speak with often here on campus to talk about making that, uh, that transition? Um, and then also consider some additional training that can prepare you to study and live in a new place, like the Intercultural Awareness Certificate, which is co-offered by the Four Directions Inter uh, Indigenous Student Center and the International Center. Next slide, please. Okay, so before you know it, the paperwork will be done and you will be on a plane and going abroad. And I'm gonna hand things over to Nikki now to talk to you about some tips for that part of your exchange journey. Thank you, Haley. So exciting, you arrived to your host country. What next? Let's take a look. So uh, one thing we wanna mention is that there will be some cultural adjustment and integration, of course. So we have some suggestions such as be open-minded and respectful towards cultures, learn about local customs, rules, traditions, and or dress code. And just remember that you may need to quarantine when arriving to your, uh, your host country. So be sure to plan in advance and do your research to make sure that you're arriving safely. And uh, what comes with moving to another country is dealing with homesickness, jet lag, and or anxiety. Uh, it can get real. So, our suggestion is to stay busy and active, establish a routine with some familiar faces, whether you wanna FaceTime family or friends or meet some new people, but also give yourself some time and remember that it's okay to ask for help. Uh, and also check in with yourself regularly throughout your exchange. So reach out for support either with us or with friends and family and find a way to stay connected with your home and your identity. Now you are a representative of Queen's University going abroad. So it would be wonderful if you could attend exchange events and connect with students who will be coming to Queen's just like tonight's event, right? We have some students who are attending from abroad uh, and vice versa. Uh, and let's talk about academic considerations. You are adjusting to a new style of learning. 
Uh, so it may be a bit stressful during these adjustment per periods. So a couple things you can do is uh, to adapt to these new teaching styles is to work with your peers, meet other classmates who are maybe more familiar with the style of learning that you're that you're beginning, um, and seize opportunities to meet some local students and experience new ways of learning and collaborating. Uh, just as we recommend at Queens, get to know your professors. Uh, that can also help and keep your future in mind. So while you're at your, this university, think about, hmm, is there something to do with this university that I would be interested in the future for research um, or postgraduate studies? Also, if you're thinking of applying to postgraduate studies, perhaps you need a reference. So thinking about that while you're there could make things easier for, for future you, if I can say that. <laughs> All right, uh, university support services. Just as we have at Queen's, uh, it's important to attend your host university orientation to learn about the various support services, but services may vary partner to partner as there's many different universities with different um, practices around the world. And, uh, but you may find there that there are services to help students with academics and learning accommodations, career planning, cultural adjustment, mental and physical health, and, um, and or many other important matters, things that matter to you. But remember, if you ever do need help with anything, we are here. You can reach us by email, ipo at queensu.ca, and we can connect you with uh, a resource at your university that you might have trouble finding. It's good to reach out. We actually have a poll here. Haley, would you mind bringing up the poll? I'm sorry, I unfortunately can't see the polls. So would you mind letting me know when it's up? No problem. Just so you know, you're muted as well. <laughs> Sorry, Nikki, I was talking no to myself there, everyone. Um, I think I got the correct poll there. So it's, have you uh, looked into your host university student services? And there's quite a variety of answers here, but it looks like the majority of students at about 40% are saying, no, not yet, but I will be. Um, but 25% are saying, yes, I did before I even applied, which is fantastic. Oh, lovely. Yeah, and then there's a, a variety of, of students in some other categories there. Great work, everyone. Thank you. All right, I think I'm gonna move on. One of my favorite parts is extracurriculars, getting involved with clubs, societies, sports. That's an amazing way to meet other students. And I'm sure you experienced the same thing when you started at Queens, right? Getting involved is a great way to meet people outside of the classroom. Uh, just remember that there may be limited or restricted extracurriculars because of COVID-19. So check out some virtual options and connect with your international exchange office and they'll help you uh, get set up there but uh, I really do recommend it. I went on exchange to France. Uh, I specifically went to Sciences Po uh, and I joined the a cappella choir there on campus, which was super, super fun. Um, and I got to meet lots of students from all over the world. We have another poll here. Uh, Haley, if you wouldn't mind bringing this one up. So this one is actually not a poll. We'd love for you to write in the comments if there's any clubs or societies you're keen to join in your host community or host campus. So like maybe if you've already researched this, that's great. Tell us a little bit about what you're keen on joining. Um, if not, maybe just throw in some, some topics, some um, areas that you'd be interested in learning more about like joining a dance team, someone saying ultimate Frisbee. Yes. <laughs> and Nikki, there was a question in there for you about what campus oh. you went to, to see also. Uh, yes. So I went to Sciences Po Reims. There's a couple different ones around France, but um, yes, Reims. Uh, also for those who are just arriving right now, who are our incoming exchange students, I see there's a couple of you, welcome. We're, we're just finishing up our presentation, it'll just be a couple more minutes. Uh, and then we're gonna be moving into part two of the evening, which is the networking session. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna keep going for the sake of time. Uh, so, 
you're getting to know your campus, but there's lots off campus as well. So get involved beyond the university community, but you could do this by volunteering, uh, by making your experience mutually beneficial, um, and also potentially working overseas, depending on the type of visa that you have, of course, as it's really important to do your research in that capacity. Uh, but there's some opportunities there. Um, but it's a great way to have a truly integrated exchange experience. Um, but Another thing I'll just say is that there may be more restrictions off campus in local communities than within your own host university. So once again, I feel like I'm a bit of a broken record, but do your research and be sure that you're COVID safe if you're engaging on or off campus. All right, let's continue. Travel, Haley mentioned that the, yes, one of the exciting parts of going on exchange is travel. Uh, and it's one of my favorite parts as well. Uh, I just wanna remind you that travel looks a little different during the COVID-19 pandemic, which I think is, is no surprise. Um, but travel to places outside of your host, host city, rather, may not be a possibility during your exchange. Uh, and just be sure to adhere to your host university and city's public health recommendations regarding travel, as um, they may differ from Queens, of course, as you're in a different country. Uh, these are two resources that I recommend downloading. Uh, so if you are able to travel, be sure to travel smart. So the first step is to follow local news, government warnings, host university warnings and restrictions. And I always recommend traveling with a friend. Be aware of the impact of COVID-19 in the places you may visit. So before you book that trip, maybe take a quick look and take all necessary precautions to ensure your safety. And you can do this by, um, downloading the Global Affairs Canada's Travel Smart app, which is the one on the bottom left. Um, you can look it up by country and see what the recommendations are for that country, whether, um, for, for example, instances of theft, political disturbances, even weather in some cases. Uh, so that's really handy. And then there's also one on the bottom right, it's called International SOS Assistance, which um, Haley, I'm not actually not as familiar with International SOS as it came out after I went on exchange, but would you mind speaking to it for a quick sure. second? Yep, it's a third party travel and security company that Queens has purchased membership with and you are going to hear all about it at the uh, October 6th safety session. Thank you. And Speaking of that session, uh, one of our, well, a, a mandatory aspect of going on exchange is to complete your OCASP, which um, is due on October 30th, but that will all be explained in the October 6th um, safety abroad orientation session. Okay. Uh, now, of course, in case of an emergency abroad, contact the local emergency authorities for assistance, contact International SOS, which is the app that Haley just mentioned, uh, contact your local embassy or consulate, speak with the exchange office at your host institution, and contact the Department of Environmental Health and Safety at Queen's. Um, as Haley said, we will be distributing these slides later, so you'll have access to this number here and, and everything that we've been talking about so far. Uh, oh, sorry, Haley, I see that there's a poll. Do we want to... I think it's okay, Nikki, for the sake of time. It's just asking if anyone's completed OCASP yet, but... We haven't had the session, so probably not many. Okay, let's go for it. So you have spent your time at your host university and now you're preparing to return. Here are some things to do. Um, an important one, close or terminate your phone plan and bank account. Um, in my experience in France, it was a bit longer than I anticipated as from my experience closing accounts in Canada. So it's good to think about this a little bit sooner than you might anticipate, just so that you're ready um, to do to take these actions. Uh, buy some last minute souvenirs, get the contact information of friends and keep in touch. Uh, and also there may be COVID-19 requirements for re-entry into Canada that you will need to follow at that time. We can't say right now, but uh, it's good to, of course, I'll say it again, do your research. Your home. This is the third part of our presentation. We're almost done. What do I do now? Well, there's lots of things we can do with this. The IPO will prompt you via email to complete your post-exchange transfer credit form. Uh, and this is something that Haley mentioned in the exchange orientation presentation. So I'm not going to go into it right now, but you can go watch that if you want a refresher. 
Uh, but keep your course syllabi in all related coursework as that can really help you when it's time to transfer your credits to kind of back up what you studied in these courses. Uh, and before you depart from your host university, learn how you can order transcripts. This is something I'm thinking for, for once again, for future you, you may need them to apply to graduate school in the near future. Um, graduate schools may ask where you studied um, po in um, post high school. And as you studied abroad, you might need a transcript from your host university. So while you're there, it might be handy to ask what is their procedure for getting a transcript from your host university? Okay. All right, uh, let's see. Um, okay, how to overcome reverse culture shock. Uh, culture shock is very real when you return from abroad. Um, and one major thing to do is to recognize the changes in yourself. You have grown more independent, you are more mature, more well-rounded and open-minded. You've gained a different perspective of the world and your surroundings, and you're willing to try new things. So uh, you can seek out volunteer opportunities at Queens. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to go a little bit faster um, with these next slides, but here are some ways that you can get involved at Queens post exchange. Uh, so find some opportunities to share your international experience, be a tourist in your home country. Uh, and of course, with reverse culture shock, there are available services at Queens to deal with this shock, um, such as counseling services and a re-entry session that the IPO will be hosting for you. Uh, now, we love, the IPO loves volunteers post exchange. And we have lots of different events that you could get involved in after you come back, such as our exchange fair, exchange connect, exchange peer advisor, and you can also submit a testimonial, which will help future students um, go abroad to the host university that you chose. We have information all about this on our website as well. Uh, you could volunteer, so this was before it was with the IPO, here it's with the International Center on campus, uh, and you could volunteer with incoming exchange students, such as the International Student Orientation Week, uh, which I worked there in my uh, fifth year at Queen's, uh, and it was wonderful, the World Link Program, the English Language Support Program, and you can keep an eye on all the various events that they have by checking out the Quick Events Calendar. Uh, with arts and science, you could volunteer with the ASSES Exchange Buddies program, which, as the name indicates, you would buddy up with an incoming exchange student and help guide them around Kingston and Queens. And lastly, there is the uh, Intercultural Awareness Certificate, which Haley mentioned earlier in this presentation with the Quick uh, and Four Directions Indigenous Student Center. I really, really recommend looking into this certificate as it's a really valuable experience um, provided by the Quick and Four Directions Indigenous, Indigenous Student Center. Uh, we also have opportunities such as the Undergraduate Awards, the Pathy Foundation Fellowship, and lastly, as promised, we have a long list of resources for you. Now, once again, we are going to be sending you this presentation. So if you want, you could take a screenshot, but you will be receiving this. We have them separated by departure, arrival, and return. Uh, Haley, is there anything that you want to mention about it? No? OK. And uh, of course, keep up to date with us by following us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our website, it's all Queens U IPO. And one thing to say, we would love if you could send us photos or if you have a blog uh, from abroad and use the hashtags, hashtag Gales Abroad and hashtag Learning Abroad. And we would love to see what you get up to while you're over there. And that is it. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation. Uh, and are there any questions before we move into part two, which I recognize we're a couple minutes behind, but we'll get, uh, we'll get in there shortly. So any questions? <laughs>